May contract hit the all-time high price on the CME futures, but when you look at the June, it's a smaller number than May contract. This is one of the indicator for that the BTC bridge momentum will end. I'm Mr. Masa. So today's a regular item, crypto assets, the weekly analysis and market forecast, January 4th and January 10th. Okay, so let's start. So as usual, this is my portfolio strategy. So I only allocate my assets to the Bitcoin and all the altcoins which is related to these six categories. And if you want to deepen your understanding about my portfolio strategy, please check out my other video about my portfolio strategy. Okay. And then my portfolio allocation says as of now, last week I sold all the KNC and ER token that I held and I got, you know, plus 130% return. And I nearly an additional investment in KP3, Sushi, Uni, OGN, and Yinch. Okay. And here's my latest portfolio allocations as of now, right? And then, and then let's start from the Bitcoin. And as usual, BTC, USD, early chart. Last week, a lot of, you know, fundamental news came out from the markets. Because of these news, the BTC price itself is highly volatile. And the starting point is this one. January 6th, the top US banking regulator banks are also likely to use public blockchain and stable coins. So with this positive news, Bitcoin price hit the bullish momentum again. On January 7th, former Federal Reserve governor now on board with Bitcoin. Another bullish news come to the market. So we're going to experience another bullish trend here. And next day, January 8th, Police officer among five dead after pro-Trump mob stormed the U.S. Capitol. And this news was one of the key momentum news to keep the BTC price in the upper side too. Then January 8th, and Bloomberg so said, backed one of the major Bitcoin futures marketplace, may go public soon. Then we're going to experience another bullish trend here. And then you know, BTC price finally hit on January 9th, 41,950. But this price itself is kind of in the peakest level about a market. And the right before that, actually, we already experiences on January 8th that Trump says new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. And because of that, this kind of you know, pro-Trump mob storm in the US Capitol also completely you know, eliminate from the White House, White House. And after that, even on January 10th, we're gonna you know post news from Elon Musk tweets that. I can accept my sorry by Bitcoin, BTC price, try to keep hovering momentum right after the price itself hit the all time high here. After this, you know, it almost tweets, we don't have any kind of positive news anymore. So BTC is gradually experiencing kind of correction moments. And then now on January 11th, 4 p.m., BTC finally hits 32,538. Okay, so almost around like, you know, the 10 second price question happening here in the BTC market from the peakest level here, okay? Then also we're gonna pay attention to the daily volume already basis too. These stats also higher than average basis stuff, which means that, you know, this price question moment also serious competition between blue side and bearish side. That's what we can confirm from here, right? Then once we're gonna with the daily chart, still I pay attention to the bearish breakout on KDJ, which I told you guys last week. So here it's clear that the short-term trend finally bearish breakout to the you know, long-term trend here. And then when you look at the you know, price here, still, when you look at the price here, one of the positive news that since $37 is a very key psychological right on the BTC at this moment, and in a Bollinger Band, in this you know, middle price range, it's already hit over $37 here. In this correction, momentum currently happening here, in my predictions, BTC price will hit middle line of this Bollinger Band, but this Bollinger middle price line itself already got over $37. So even in a correction moment, still we can confirm that the BTC price itself is keeping the bullish momentum. Okay, that's what I'm thinking about. And another thing I want you to pay attention to is actually this one. So right before about correction momentum on the candle chart here, the BTC formed 
this number here, 36,500 to 37,500, it's kind of works like support line used to be, but now it's time to be a resistance line. But it's not 100% for sure yet. Typical price formations on a candle chance basis. Looks like you know this price line will be the next resistance line. Okay. And the next timing, the BTC price above again, we need to pay attention to bullish breakout of this resistance line here. And a weekly chart. When you look at the candle chart here, last week price movement on BTC looks like correction momentum after BTC price breakout this you know key psychological line twenty thousand dollars here. So almost like a one month, we're gonna experience in a quite bullish momentum on December. Then now we're gonna experience a correction momentum here. So which means that I don't think BTC has not completed their bullish momentum yet. It still continues. Then, and one of the things we need to pay attention to is actually KDJ here. As you can see, the purple line short-term trend is now going break out on the you know, long-term side too. But still, still the term itself is within a one week. So this you know purple line itself might recover again here. Currently, we need to pay attention to KDJ, but this is not a clear signal that we can confirm the bearish trend will come up to the weekly chart analysis itself. Okay, so to me, this correction momentum is kind of middle momentum before they you know much longer bullish momentum on a BTC. That's what I'm thinking about. Okay, one of the key things what I recognize that about you know what was you know kind of key indicator that you know this kind of short term bearish momentum will come to the market is actually this one. Wrapped Bitcoin burns outpaced minting for the first time in December. So, orange mark itself is a newly minted WBTC, and the blue color here is a bond WBTC. And then WBTC these days is a very critical, you know, DeFi products for a trader or any kind of DeFi user who's gonna make money on a, you know crypto space. Blue mark eventually bigger than orange mark means newly investor who's gonna mint the WBTC. It's smaller than those people who are completed the contract itself. This indicates for me that, you know, since the Bitcoin price itself is showed up in a huge bridge momentum in December, so a lot of traders recognize that it's kind of good timing for them to sell their BTC, actual BTC, and make money, and then looking for the you know next chance to start their you know, WBTC contract for the you know DeFi business opportunity in a crypto space. So this is kind of, you know, to me, kind of forward signal indicator for us to recognize that correction momentum of Bitcoin is pretty close. And the next fundamental stuff, all the market cap and BTC dominance slates. Market cap plus 21.7%. Last week also hit over 20%. So still super bullish week last week too. But when you look at the BTC dominance slates, it's minus 2.22%. Last week was also minus 1.83%. So which means that Still, the key driver of this market cap growth itself come from our coin markets. Then, once we're gonna look at the USDT price, it's pretty clear. Last week, newly issued USDT is plus 11.5 percent, super large increase. Usually, you know, crypto investment space, those money goes to our coin because it's the USDT, not the fiat money. Most of it are BTC money. They gotta you know take the capital from fiat money, not the USDT. Okay, so from these stats, the things we can learn from here is most of the market cap developments happened last week come from our coin, not a Bitcoin. Then CME BTC futures, one month price difference average as usual, January 10th is plus $483. Super bridge. Last week was 281, so still plus 72%. But since we're gonna currently experience the price correction momentum, so this number itself also goes to minus next week too. But one of the key things I want you to pay attention to here is actually this one: May contracts and June contracts. May contract hit the all-time high price on the CME futures, but when you look at the June, it's a smaller number than May contracts. This is one of the indicators for that. The BTC bridge momentum will end within May, not a June. Then in my analysis, also the bullish momentum 
BTC price this year will end in, in May this year. And another stat from CME BTC futures. Open interest plus 4.3%, middle increase, and average volume plus 222%, huge increase. So this is also indicate that you know how they apply sequential momentum, especially competing bullish side, bearish side, it's so harsh right now. That's the things we can run from here, right? And next one, BTC hash light, mining competitions. January 10th, difficulty updates, and it is plus 10.79%. Why? Because BTC price it went up. Next time in January 24th, I think this stat is you know goes down. The reason is currently we're gonna experience a question you know moments of the BTC price. That's why. Yep. And another key stats we need to pay attention to is BTC transaction fee. So January 10th is $13.9 per transactions. And then the things I want you to pay attention to is actually this one. Last time, the highest score is $55.16 on 2017. Almost a peak six timing over the bubble moment of the Bitcoin. All right. Over the time, this, you know, price itself, also the forward indicator that end of the bullish momentum of Bitcoin, because once this cost is goes up, value of the Bitcoin itself as a daily use stuff will be getting worse because of this in you know, a higher stats number here. But to me, this number is not that you know, so critical because Bitcoin is digital gold, not the currency. Treasury reserve assets to protect your assets from the inflations or hyperinflation stuff. So from this perspective, actually, this cost is not that a critical moment, but a lots of lots of investors consider that you know this number itself is heavily you know influenced on in circuit value of the Bitcoin itself. We should keep paying attention to this number here. Okay. And the next one, grayscale investment Bitcoin positioning. January 10th, almost no change. And then even the BTC price in hit the highest score there. But also like since BTC price experiencing kind of you know bearish trend right now, so these stats won't go up to next week too. That's what I'm thinking about. Okay. Then price position stays after the third halving. So here's my positions. 150,000 to 200,000 in March to May 2021. Okay. The interest point on this analysis is this one. So they predict December 31, 2020, it's going to hit $41,000. Then now, January 9th, it's going to hit $41,950. And then this line itself of their predictions, okay? And then they're gonna predict April 18th, 2021, BTC hits 100,000. May 12th, it's gonna hit $387,000 here. Then after that, you know, we're gonna experience the correction moments after the halving as usual. But key point is BTC price is catching up these predictions in a rapid way, like this way. It's pretty interesting, okay? And the Google search trend. Amazing things happening here. So Bitcoin compared with last week plus 29, 68, huge increase. The gold minus 2, 75, USD plus 35, ETH plus 2 and 4. So golden close will come soon. And this stats also the kind of forward indicator for us that popularity switching point, transition point from gold to Bitcoin as a digital gold for treasury reserve assets as an anti inflation investment. This is also my primary reason that why I you know, keep this stats analysis. So it's finally golden close, timing will come soon. Great. Then world risk asset market cap ranking January 10th. Bitcoin right now is between Facebook number seven and Tencent number eight. So currently number eight. Compared with last week, one rank up. Great. And the world reaches person ranking January 10th. So currently number one is Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon. And Satoshi Nakamoto is five ranks up last week because the number is 23rd, but now it's 18th. Then now it's higher than Jack Ma, founder of Alibaba here. Great progress. And the next one, the gold. Also, historical things happening here in the gold market too. So last week on January 5th, once gold price hit 
6.82, gold price is crushed. So, gold price could not recover higher than 1952 on November 6. So, still the bearish momentum. The things we can learn from here, so 1847 is current price. Investment transition happening here from gold to Bitcoin. And the next one, US Treasury 10-year real yield curve pushed back again. So plus 14%, it's gonna kind of minus 0.93%. And then the main reason for this stats here is White House turmoil because of Trump. But now this problem is completely solved. In my predictions, this number itself it's pushed back to minus again from next week. Okay. The next one, S and P 500 index about new jobless claim on January 7th, almost no change, and then U.S. unemployment in December, no change. So still they're gonna keep the bridge momentum here. Okay. And then this is also pretty good for Bitcoin investment or crypto industry itself because a lot of retail investor can maintain risk on mode. Then currently, the risk level of the Bitcoin or altcoin investment is higher than stock investment. So once we can keep this kind of you know, risk on mode on the stock investment, a lot of it investors allocate their extra assets to the crypto asset market, Bitcoin, altcoin stuff. So it's quite favorable for us. Okay. And the same thing happening here on the NASDAQ too. Then US economy events, January 11th, January 15th. Same as usual. January 14th, new jobless claim. Then from here, key news updates. First one is COVID-19 as usual. So total infection number is plus 5.25%. It's a little bit improved because last week was 5.8%. And the death rates also 4.5%. Last week was 4.8%. So it's a little bit improved. Okay. Now we are in the third spike of the COVID-19. But lots of you know governments try to take a control of our economic activity right now. So this stats is improving. Okay. And then here, it's a one of the critical analysis I want to tell you here this time. We can learn the critical analysis from the internet. First things I want you to pay attention to here that NASDAQ is a leading market for the a lots of internet companies, right? And they're gonna hit the bubble market score on 2000 March 01. 5048.62. This one. When is the next timing they're gonna get over this score after the bubble burst? Was 2015 on April. So internet took 15 years to overcome the bubble market of their industry developments since its inception. But here's the blockchain 2018, January. They're gonna hit the highest score in the bubble moment, $449 billion here. Then, three years later, in January 2021, finally hit over $860 billion. So, blockchain only took three years to overcome the bubble, which means industry development speed is five times faster than that of the internet. That's my analysis. Then, since I also experienced it in the internet industry and also I incubated the blockchain and crypto industry since 2014 in Japan to the global. I also feel that blockchain industry development speed is much faster than internet. These stats finally convinced me that five times is actual number. But when you look at the, a lot of you know, altcoin project developments or technical development on this industry, five times in a fastest pace. It's not a questionable thing. It's not a questionable thing. I think I can naturally accept that. So from the investment perspective, we have to think about like this way, especially compared with internet stock investment. Okay. This is very important. And the next key news, why Joe Biden $3 trillion stimulate package could add fuel to the Bitcoin's rally? Chamas sees Bitcoin as insurance against Earth uncertainty. As we know that these days, a lot of popular stock analysts or economists or investor, they're gonna start and say that Bitcoin is a great investment in this Earth 
economic environment in a global basis, especially because of Corona shock. Things I want you to understand here that these are the kind of fundamental momentum that Bitcoin price keep the bridge in super long term. Okay, all the time we need to pay attention to who's gonna start to say like this way, especially those investor who are going to see the negative comments or critics for the Bitcoin tend to be a supporter of Bitcoin. It's a great indicator for us that market developments, Bitcoin is getting better and better. Then next news, analyst Willy Wu said Bitcoin could flip gold's trillion dollar use as financial hedge this year. I totally agree with this. As I already explained to you guys on a Google search trend, that search trend itself is a forward indicator for us that we can recognize that how they know a lot of lots of retail investors recognize there is a popularity transition happening here from gold to Bitcoin as financial hedge investment stuff. Okay. And the next key news, my mayor opened to exploring allocating 1% of the city's reserve to Bitcoin. This is also another great news to the market. The reason is these type of actions especially some of the states on the US all the time accelerate the post dollar era on a global economy. Then Bitcoin all the time play a key role for this issue, not only about the private companies such as MicroStrategy, but local government itself start to rely on centralized financial system, but they're going to start to rely on the decentralized financial system such as Bitcoin or altcoin which is a great accelerator for us about blockchain industry market development stuff. And the next key news, Grayscale removes XRP from the digital large cap fund. Also blockchain.com, another major crypto wallets joins growing lists of exchange halting XRP trading. Again, I all the time told you guys that we need to eliminate all the these type of garbage coins from this blockchain industry within this year. We need this. Why? Because in a moment of the altcoin market development or entire blockchain you know, market development stuff, we need to eliminate these kind of garbage coins. And XRP is typical one because they focus on fear of missing out of market, you know, formal market. So they try to sell their you know, software to the you know, banking industry. It's completely meaningless to develop this market in a healthier way. I completely admire these kind of action stuff. Okay. And the next key news, Ukraine chooses Stellar Foundation to develop its CVDC, Legality Infrastructure for Stable Coins. I fully understand that CVDC market development stuff is kind of, you know, great accelerator about entire blockchain industries itself, but still it's a formal market, fiat missing market just like XRP targeted market. It's kind of a very sad story that finally instead of foundations decided to seriously focus on a CVDC market. But this is one of the critical reasons that why I'm not going to investment in XRM token instead of foundation crypto assets. Okay. And the next key news, Mark Cuban says he will run the presidents if BTC hits $1 million. In my predictions, it's going to happen after the fourth halving, 2024. So let's looking forward to Mark Cuban, you know, will be in a US presidential campaign. And as usual, this formula is what we're waiting for right now. So more and more retail investors recognize crypto economy has much larger potential than US economy. Crypto economy experiences exponential growth. And then to realize this formula, what are we waiting for is second Nixon shock since 1972. Okay. And from here, our coin. And let's start from ETH. The as usual, three major burst project stats from DAF.com. And uh, almost there is no change since last week. Okay. But the key things we need to pay attention to right now is ETH transaction fee. Currently, January 10th hit $7.44 but last week actually hit around $16. These stats hit higher and higher. It's gonna be a huge burden for the market developments of the DeFi, especially for the DEX and the decentralized lending market. 
when you look at the ease price, all the time we need to pay attention to these stats developments. And at the same time, these stats also huge influence on other DeFi market development stuff too. Let's pay attention to this continuously, okay? Unrelated key news. Institutional rocket flow could soon boost Ethereum, says macro investor Dan Piero. I completely agree with this idea. Within this year, when you look at the Bitcoin, already institutional investors such as MicroStrategy, Square, or even Miami, you know, federal states, already come into the Bitcoin market. Next target is ETH. And this can happen within this year. ETH, you know, institutional rocket foil to the ETH also boost up DeFi market too, because a lot of DeFi project is active on Ethereum ecosystem. Okay, that's what I'm thinking about. So that's also another reason that the YWETH market development stuff, it's huge potential in long run for this market development stuff. That's what I'm thinking about, okay? And the next key news, Brock One CTO and co-founder Dan Remar resigned. So actually I already sold my ETH holdings just right before this news came to the market. I, I don't lose anything from this news, but since you know, Brock One take the central approach, you know, open software development stuff. So these lost is huge influence on their software value development stuff in long term. Okay. Then to me, it's kind of very, you know, to me, you know, I can understand about the why Dan, you know, decided to leave EOS because you know, Ethereum is too powerful. In a bus market, we gradually recognize that Ethereum is the only Ethereum will be the single most dominant player in the market. That's we can that's we can gradually confirm that, and that's also typically happen in a software investment stuff. Okay. And the next one, Uniswap, Dex market. So January 10th, trading volume competition between Central Exchange and the Dex, almost no change. But as I told you in previous slide, since ease transaction fee. So we need to pay attention to these kind of volume, trading volume stats, the open stuff for these major, you know, DEX project here, okay? And another DEX project, DRX. They are key news updates. So Zeros protocol prepares to launch its most powerful updates. So it's gonna happen this, you know, April to summer. Their first major updates about this one. Compared to version 3, Xerox V4 improves RFQ gas costs. But as I told you, ETH gas cost is one of the major issues for the DEX market developments these days. These major updates, especially gas cost reduction, to critical key driver for them for its growth. Okay? Then another major update is this one. V4 allows custom on-chain liquidity pools to be plugged in a BR standard interface and easily aggregated with all other liquidity sources. So there is protocol so seriously focused on aggregating solutions on a DEX market, just like one inch, okay? So these competitions, also another key growth driver about DEX market these days too. So let's continuously pay attention to this, okay? And next one, make it out, MKR. So lending market updates, total TBL, Finally hit over $10 billion, it's great. And plus 23.4%. And then make it out, plus 22.5. Compound, 23.4%. And Abe, 22.2%. So most of the reason coming from their each stock asset growth is radically happened there about you know, capital injection to the altcoin market. So these stats, you know, so these stats clearly show, so these stats clearly show that these kind of stats, you know, increase stuff. But at the same time, great things happening here, you know, MKR. Quite for a long period of time, MKR price itself is hovering between $400 to $500, but finally experiencing, you know, huge breakout. And it's finally, they're gonna hit the all time high on January 9th. 1978. Main reason came from this news. Top US banking regulator banks are also allowed to use public blockchain as stable coins. So finally, a lot of people worried about you know stable coin regulation stuff, but now US banking regulator approved this kind of regulator approach 
on a constructive way. So this you know, means finally we see that the biggest market growth of the stablecoin market on my analysis, MKR has the highest potential in the stablecoin market. If you want to deepen your understanding about this point, please check out my other video about MKR token analysis. Okay. And the next one, Wi-Fi, Young Finance. So asset market updates. Total TBL plus 88.2%, huge increase. And most of the stats come from this new player here, Bacha Dao. And I'm planning to analyze this project later, so please wait my updates, okay? But in parallel, and at the same time, Young Finance hit minus 2.3%, and the BM hit plus 30.3%. And why RenBM hits this higher number here is WBTC because RenBM is a leading player about WBTC market. Okay. And the related key news: Young Finance developer reveals version two spec tethers, and the most of the updates about actually UI stuff. I understand that you know some of the investors are really complain about you know the strategy development stuff on the Wi-Fi about asset management stuff too. I'm not so seriously worried about it. Why? Because once we can look at you know Andy Cronger activity. He's gonna develop the KP3R, and also he's developing the Dairy Swap too. And once you're gonna, you know, look at my these two video about KP3R and Dairy Swap, you can see that how the Andy Cronje tried to develop the, you know, side effective tool around Wi-Fi ecosystem, especially develop the decentralized ecosystem for the DeFi programmer to develop the effective strategy for Wi-Fi products. Okay, so that's why. And the next one, Synthetix, SNX. So delivery market updates. Total TBL plus 30% increase. And the Synthetix plus 31%. Nexus Mutual plus 30%. And Hedic plus 12%. Most of the TBL growth come from Synthetix and Nexus Mutual. Both are pretty good. And the theater. So nearly 7 Saturn Edge nodes now running on the theater network. This number has nearly tripled in just the past two months as the Seattle network grows stronger leading up to mainnet three-point joint today here. Amazing. So it looks like you know, Theater Network is a leading player about decentralized CDN, one of my major you know, focusing points on my portfolio strategy. So I put in lots of my assets on this project too, so this is great. Okay. And this one, Chainlink. Link. Then key news, one finance to use Chainlink Plus speed to resist flash or attack. So I fully understand that decentralized Oracle price feed is not the ultimate solution to flash on attack problem because DEX project is seriously focused on developing the decentralized pricing model stuff too. But the actual benefits currently most of the player can get is just like this way. The backed by proven crypto economics, high quality data, and probably secure and reliable Oracle infrastructure, Chainlink's time tested and battle hardened price fees will ensure that Wild Finance Protocol is resistant to flash strong attacks. This is one of the critical reasons that I see the huge potential on the chain link, including dynamic NFT too. Okay. Okay, last slide as usual. The HODL is the best for retail investor to minimize the risk and maximize the return. The so thinking about the Oracle investment is just like you know investment in the early days of the Google and Facebook. And when you look at the amazing traction by legendary angel investor such as Peter Thiel, Peter Hoffman, Long Conway, all the time they're gonna take the very simple investment approach is long-term investment. And here's another evidence from the Binance research. It's a Bitcoin case, but all the time, longest holder maximize the return. So in this case, Bitcoin longest holder made 220% return compared with other short-term holder here too. So I also basically take the long-term investment approach for the crypto assets still. So I also recommend you guys to take that same approach like me, okay? So that is all this time. I also make a lot of interesting videos on the crypto and the blockchain space. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye.